Hello everyone, welcome to the second grading video of the day, third overall. Uh, I'm hoping this will be a popular video because it's a popular coin. These first two coins are going to be easy to grade because they're already graded for us by PCGS. The point of learning to grade myself is that I don't have to buy slabbed coins, but uh, it's definitely going to be useful to have some uh, in-person examples to look at to reference. This one's been graded fine, 12, by PCGS. There's a lot to look at uh, in a standing Liberty quarter. The first thing, well, so the first thing in basically all coins is to look around the edge, um, around the rim, and see if there's any rim damage or any serious uh, scratches, dents, gouges, anything like that. And if there had been, they wouldn't have graded them over at PCGS, so uh, you can just kind of take a glance for ones that are already slabbed, but if you're buying a raw coin, you definitely need to look for that. The next thing on the Standing Liberty is to take a look at the head, um, because that is often the most important feature. Uh, and then immediately after that, you look at the right thigh, uh, and then the shield, and then the toes. And so for a fine, you can see the head is fairly worn down, but you can still kind of make out a little bit of the detail. The shield, and this is very common for these uh, because of where the high spot on the coin is, starts out worn in the middle and then crosses down over the body. Um, so there's like a wear arc right there um, that cuts from the center of the shield sort of down to the abdomen. Uh, the thigh, uh, there should be a drapery, well, so in a perfect coin there'd be a drapery line that crosses right over above the knee right here. Um, and how much of that you can see tends to, to determine a lot about the value of the coin. Um, and in this case, you can barely see, let's see if I cover most everything else up, maybe you can kind of see where it starts over on the side there. Uh, and the toes, can't really make out much detail on the toes. Um, on the other side, it's primarily about the high points on the eagle. Um, and the detail of the feathers. We're going to spend most of our time on the obverse. So this has been graded a fine because the shield is worn. You can see that arc there that crosses over the shield and sort of um, wears off this back portion of the shield. Um, the drapery line down by the leg is basically not visible. Uh, the drapery that should sit on either side of the leg is only barely visible on that one piece right there. The head is worn flat across the cheek, um, and the toes are not particularly visible. So that grades it as a fine. Um, hopefully I've given a, a lot of uh, information on what to look at there. So looking at this next one, and it's a, not the easiest to distinguish between the two of them, just because the, the fine graded one is dirtier and that kind of makes a lot of the details pop um, on the camera because there's more contrast. But hopefully I can take a look at this one. And I actually think um, if I were looking at this, and PCGS is certainly better at this than I am, but I probably would have been hesitant to grade this at an XF40. Um, what it's got going for it is the head the head and the shield. Um, there is uh, a pretty solid head there. Uh, it's only slightly flattened. Uh, the shield, you can see the rivets the whole way around. It is worn in the center. Um, there is a fair amount of detail on the robes cutting down over the left leg and a little bit on the abdomen. Um, but the right leg, you're supposed to be able to make out the visible line across right above the knee, and you, it's very difficult to do um, on this. In fact, I would say that it almost it shouldn't qualify on that, but I think the face and the shield are good enough that it got some leeway from PCGS. The toes as well um, are not in great shape. So uh, that's these two coins and why I think they were graded what they were graded. And I'll hold them up side by side so you can see what I was talking about with the dirt making the details pop. You can see like the details especially on the shield, 
Um, for the parts where it isn't worn, the fine actually looks better than the the XF. But uh, that said, the XF does have a complete ring of rivets. And the head on the XF, I don't know how well you can make out the depth, but the head on the XF is not as flat as it is on the fine. Okay, so now that we know all that, our task is to take a look at this ungraded one. And this is a type one. There's two types to the Standing Liberty. Um, the uh, type one was only minted like for one month in 1916 and then throughout 1917 before they switched over to the type two. Um, I'm holding this up against the XF because I think this is at least an XF. Um, I think the face looks better. The head and the face. I think the shield looks better. Although that may have something to do with the dirt and not the actual details. Dirt or tone, whichever, I'm not sure. The toes definitely look better. You can actually make out the toes on the ungraded coin. Um, and the, the big thing that I think sets them apart is the drapery line on the right thigh, which you can actually see on the ungraded one. As opposed to having a very difficult time seeing on the graded one. It is kind of there if you look really hard. So, um, taking all that into account, um, looking around the edges, the actual, so the little pattern around the edge is much better on the uh, ungraded one. There's no rim damage. No visible scratching. No damaged surfaces. And I would grade this ungraded one somewhere above this PCGS XF, um, which I'm a little skeptical on the XF40 on that, but like I said, they're better at this than me. So I would say this has to be at least an XF uh, 40, and I don't know, I could make a case to try to get it up to an AU, but I might just be talking myself up. Um, so let me know what you think of this coin, what you think it should probably be graded. Um, I paid $75 for this one, which if it is at least an XF40, it should be worth at least $100. Um, I'm hoping it's actually worth a little more because I think it's better than an XF40. Um, these two I bought together, they both came out around mid-30s a piece, um, which is a decent price for the XF40. Um, the fine is a, a rare date and mint market is a, well, not a rare date, but a rare mint market is an S mint. Um, I did overpay a little bit for the fine. Um, it was one of those uh, clicking too fast to increase max bid. Um, but overall, I'm not terribly upset. Um, I think I paid about about right for a decent deal on the the XF40 and about coin store prices on the fine. Um, and that's if they weren't slabbed. And so I think they carry a bit of a premium because of the slabbing. And uh, I'm okay with my purchase there. But Primarily, I'm just really curious what you think of this one. Um, I don't know. Should I should I try it? Should I consider sending it in to be graded? Um, do you think it is a legitimate um, AU? Uh, and I'll have plenty of links down below for you to take a look. Um, I feel like it's too good to be an XF and maybe not quite good enough to be an AU. But I've seen some AUs that that uh, maybe don't maybe look about this good. So. Let me know. I hope you all enjoyed the video. I know this is a popular coin and there are more on the way and more other kinds on the way. Um, good luck grading. 
I highly recommend you take a little time at your coin shop just staring at the same coin, whatever your favorite one is, and looking at the, the differences in the grades to see what makes one one grade and one another. Uh, good luck, everyone.